Today I'd like to share some thoughts on some passages in Matthew 25 in regard to how Jesus Christ will cast into hell people that have neglected to support Jews during the time of the Great Tribulation. We read in Matthew uh, 25, verse 31, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Verse 32, And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from, from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. We see this event occurs after the second coming of Jesus Christ, when he has gathered all the nations before him to judge them. And this is not the, the great white throne judgment we, that occurs after the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, but this is a, a judgment of all the Gentiles that survived the horrors of the tribulation period. And this judgment will determine whether a Gentile will be able to enter into and enjoy the blessings of the Messianic kingdom or be cast into hell. Now, I would suggest that this is the very same judgment read of in Joel chapter 3, which I spoke of in a previous video, um, where I emphasize in that teaching that it, when it comes to the judgment of the, the nations, what was of prime importance to God was how his people Israel and the land were treated disrespectfully by the nations and how they, the nations would be punished accordingly. In a similar way, uh, we see in Matthew 25 that when it comes to Christ judging the nations, what is a primary concern to him is how his brethren, the Jews, are treated. For after pronouncing a glorious blessing and welcome to the Gentile sheep of, of this judgment in verse 34, Christ gives the reason why they will experience this blessing. It's because how they cared for the Jews. So he says in verse 35, For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Christ then clarifies how it is, how it was that these sheep had ministered to Jesus. And it was by means of them ministering to Christ's brethren, or the Jews. He provides the clarification to the Gentile sheep for him when they expressed being unclear as to how exactly they had ministered to Jesus. As he says in verse 40, And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of my brothers, you did it to me. Now we know Jesus is referring to the Jews or Israelites as he speaks of, his, of a people he calls my brethren. Now, while in other texts Christ speaks of his brethren as simply being those that do the will of God, in this passage, He's referring to Jews, or those of the nation of Israel, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The reason is because the overall context and purpose of the book of Matthew, where the book of Matthew is directed to a Jew Jewish audience. And it deals with the declaration and presentation of Christ as king of Israel. It records that Israel's tragic rejection of Jesus as king. But wonderfully, it also promises um, Christ's future acceptance as king. And he also deals with his return as king. Consider that Matthew 23 through Matthew 25 is, is very Jewish in its orientation. For example, Christ weeps over Jerusalem in Matthew 23. He speaks of the great tribulation in Matthew 24 and the need for those in, in Judea to flee to the mountains. He speaks of the abomination and desolation in the holy place. So again, the context of Christ's words is that Christ is speaking of Jews. Those are his brethren in this context and not so much the church. Now, while Christ focuses on the Jews who will be persecuted in the Holy Land in Matthew 24, the intense persecution of Jews will be worldwide during this time. So there's going to be a great opportunity for Gentiles to minister to them in this great time of need. And in light of Christ's words in this chapter, um, these Jews will have a need for such things as clothing, for food, and, and drink, companionship, housing, medical treatment. And they will have all kinds of acute needs, and it's the responsibility of Gentiles to seek to help them. What Jesus is teaching here is that there will be a great blessing to those Gentiles who do take action and help Jews in need. Namely, they will be welcomed into the glorious messianic age of Jesus Christ, where Christ will be reigning for, from Jerusalem for a thousand years. However, there's also a great punishment for Gentiles that do not tend to the needs of Jews during the tribulation. We read of Christ's dreadful sentencing of the Gentile goats in verse 41. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. And Christ gives the reason 
They will all be damned forever to hell. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then we read of the objection that all these goat Gentiles will have to Christ's words. Then they also will answer, saying, Lord, what do we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and, and did not minister to you? And so all these Gentiles are confused about what Christ is saying. But Christ clarifies what he's talking about, and it is that these Gentiles fail to care for the Jews during their time of need. As Christ says in verse 45, then he will answer them saying, truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. Again, the context of Christ's words is the persecution of Jews during the tribulation. And Christ is drawing attention to the fact that these Gentiles didn't care at all for the Jews. And what is interesting, Jesus is not even condemning anti-Semitism, which manifests itself in, in verbally or physically assaulting Jews. Instead, he's pronouncing condemnation against apathy towards his brethren, the Jews, who will be sorely persecuted in the tribulation. And this condemnation is a permanent, eternal one, for Christ declares in verse 45, and these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This should be a sober warning to all anti-Semites, those that dare in their arrogance, and their wicked submission to the deception of the devil to wish evil against the nation of Israel. Again, in Matthew 25, Christ isn't even dealing with people who are as bad as anti-Semites, who speak against the Jews and, and try to harm them. Christ is simply condemning Gentiles who are indifferent to the Jews. They just didn't care and didn't seem to think they had any moral obligation to help them. Well, their, their eternal destiny is burning up in torments in the lake of fire. Now, if that is their punishment, how much more severe punishment for those anti-Semites who spew venom and hatred towards the Jewish people and desire their destruction? We see in these passages that apathy is a grievous, wicked sin in the eyes of Jesus Christ, particularly when it comes to those he loves. And this is why we as professing Christians need to be very alarmed. We don't care about ministering to the desperate needs of other people we come in contact with, whether it be physical needs or even emotional needs. For example, I know professing Christians that they have no problem abandoning other believers due to their de struggles with depression. That's just too much for them. They'll say, I, I, don't, I want nothing to do with that. God, God will heal, heal them and it, he'll, he'll take care of them. Well, if that's your attitude, Christ takes that as a personal offense as you are neglecting him in his time of need. It's as if Jesus is depressed and you don't care about him. You don't care about listening to him talk about his pain. Jesus is offended. And keep in mind that this passage is not teaching a works gospel. It is simply that one of the ways in which a person demonstrates they are truly saved and love Jesus Christ is how they minister to those that Christ loves, and particularly the Jews in the tribulation. And if you've been guilty of anti-Semitism, whether you're a believer or not, I urge you on the authority of the Word of God to repent of your sin and seek forgiveness from God through Jesus Christ. Thank you.